Good afternoon, Patriots. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to complete the protein synthesis drawing. As here you see on the screen, um, this is um, a wonderful example of one of my previous students' work. And this is what we're going to complete today. Okay. Uh, before we begin, I want to bring to your attention, your drawing does not have to look exactly like this. This is just one way to do it. That being said, please refer to the rubric that you have been given that tells you um, the things that I'm going to be looking for in your drawing. Okay. Great. And let's begin. Okay, the first thing of our, on our uh, rubric says that DNA has to be in the nucleus. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, draw that in here. Okay, and I usually like to put my nucleus here, let's get rearranged here. I'm just going to go ahead and put nucleus. Okay. Make sure you label everything as you do, as you're doing the drawing. So that being said, DNA is in the nucleus. So here I'm just going to go ahead and color code, and I'm going to go ahead and since my next one is that um, that DNA has to be double stranded, I'm going to go ahead and um, draw DNA in here. I'm going to make it double stranded. Okay. As you can see, DNA is double stranded here. The reason why I drew it like that is because, as you can see here, DNA has to unzip. Okay. Next, since I just drew DNA, please make sure you label it DNA and DNA. Now, in your actual exam, you're going to go ahead and need to provide me with 12 codons. 12 codons. And I'll write that down. And within the 12, it's, there's going to be one start, one stop, and 10 normal codons. Okay. Just find normal codons. Okay. That being said, for this illustration, I will not be doing 12 total codons. I'm going to go ahead and do five total codons. Okay. So great, we have double stranded, unzipped. The DNA bases are complementary. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with my um, template strand of my DNA. And I'm going to specifically begin that with T, A, C. And the reason why I'm doing that is because after transcription happens, that is going to um, transcribe into AUG as a start codon. Okay, that being said, please don't get mixed up here because this is one strand and I'm going to continue on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in random codons. You can use any codons you like on the exam. However, you may not repeat any codons. As you can see, only A's, T's, C's, and G's are being in here. Now, since I need to make a stop codon, the last codon of this original DNA strand, for this template strand, I'm going to go ahead and put um, A, T, T. Okay. And later on, that will be transcribed to UAA. Okay, great. Next, I'm going to go ahead and find the complementary pair for this DNA strand. Where there's a T, there's an A. Where there's an A, there's a T. Where there's a C, there's a G. Where there's a G, there's a C. Where there's a C, there's a G. Guanine. Where there's an adenine, there's a thymine. And where there's an adenine here, it's a thymine, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Great. So DNA bases are complementary. Check. Okay. Once again, no use here because this is DNA. Next, RNA polymerase enzyme is going to go ahead and come in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw in RNA polymerase here. You can do a dotted line. You can do a solid line. I'm going to label RNA polymerase. Okay. Great. So that's going to unzip the DNA and add in the nucleotides. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in my, oops, sorry, what color should I make this? I'll make it red. My mRNA strand right through the middle. Label that. As you can see, RNA polymerase is going to be that enzyme that go ahead and adds on these specific um, um, new codons. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and adds RNA nucleotides. So where's the T? So I'm only going to go ahead and look at this template strand here. OK. 
Okay, the one with the TAC and the one that ends with ATT, because I know for a fact that my AUG needs to come out of this strand. Now be careful here. Don't go this way. Instead, you want to go this way to the Gs, because it's the same strand. Where there's a G, there's a C. Where there's a C, there's a G. Where there's an A, there's a U, since this is RNA now. And where there's an A, there's a U, A, A. As you can say, um, see, that is one of my stop codons there. Okay? You are. Great. Next, mRNA copies the original DNA, forms cop. Okay, good. Complementary bases. mRNA has uracil instead of thymine. Just, just make sure that there's no thymines here, no T's. Next, mRNA exits through a nuclear pore. Okay. Now I should have drew little nuclear pores, and I, sh I should have actually put little gaps here. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and just make a little circle. Okay. Now, if I could go back, what I would do is I would actually our little gaps and label them on nuclear pores. Being said, just go and label one of these. Nuclear pore. Okay, that being said, let's take the same mRNA strand and let's go ahead and show that it exits one of these. Let's remove this. Once again, label. Okay, I'm going to copy that same strand right over. Wonderful. Okay. Let's go back to our checklist here. Exit to a nuclear pore, check. Process is called transcription. It's really important that you label here that this transcription happening within the nuclear. Wonderful. All parts are labeled. Check. Okay. Great. Now let's go on to the second half, this side. Ribosome is in the cytoplasm. Okay. Let's go ahead and check that off, and I'll work on that right now. Okay. Okay. Here I'm going to go ahead and Draw your ribosome here. Don't worry about the different subunits here. Let's go ahead and label this as the ribosome. And we also need to label that this is now the cytoplasm. Okay. Okay. Next, the ribosome will go ahead and hook onto the mRNA. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put my mRNA hooking onto my ribosome here. Okay. Please note, like in the next couple minutes or so, the bell may ring for the end of school. Okay, so I may have to pause there. Okay. Once again, this yours is going to be made up of 12 codons. Mine is only one, two, three, four, five, five total codons. And what I'd like to see here is, is show at least one codon that has already passed the ribosome. So the ribosome is going to the right, and it's reading from left to right. So I'm going to show you here the AUG. And in class, we talked about how there are two sites for tRNAs to go in and bind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two codons here. So if you see, I'm just copying this here. G, G, G. U, 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 A, A. Once again, this is my mRNA. And yours will be a little bit longer tomorrow. Okay, move that this way. Okay, next, the tRNA is going to go ahead and carry an amino acid. Okay, so for this, I'm going to go ahead and show the tRNA coming in. Actually, I'm jumping a little bit. I'm going to show the tRNA here. I'm going to show a tRNA here. Okay. So it says here, tRNA carries amino acids. So our tRNAs here are carrying amino acids. Next, the tRNA has an anticodon that matches the codon of the mRNA. Okay. So where there's a C here, since this is still RNA, this is tRNA, and this is mRNA, the codon. The anticodon is going to be G, 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 guanine for this one. 
and the anticodon is going to be seek, seek here for this one. Ribosome reads codon and matches the anticodon. Wonderful. PRNA leaves the correct amino acid and goes away from the ribosome. Now in class we talked about how the codon is read and not the anticodon. So that being said, it's really important that when you're translating, this is translation. It's really important that when you're translating, you take the mRNA codon, the CCC. So here on the chart, we're going to go C, 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 and that's codes for proline. Go ahead and put in proline here. And G, 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 my mRNA here. G, G, G codes for glycine. This one that's coming in, you only need to show one tRNA that's coming in. And for this one, this tRNA is going to be specific for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put A, A, A. And you do not need to show all the tRNAs waiting in line. No, only one is coming in at a time. Okay? And it's during this time that UUU will now code for U, 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 phenylalanine. So I'm just going to put PHE. And then we also learned that as the ribosome goes across, the tRNAs are going to be coming in to bring their amino acids. In addition, a peptide bond will form. Between these, between these two amino acids, letting, uh, allowing this carrier now, without the proline, to leave. Okay? So to kind of show that, what I've done here is a, is a tRNA is leaving. That being said, this tRNA is specific to this guy right here, this codon. So the anticodon here would be U, A, C. Oop, I made a big mistake here, actually, I realized because this amino acid should not be on here. The purpose of tRNA is to bring in the amino acid. Okay. So the amino acid was actually already dropped off. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of white out here. So when you show this, just go ahead and show that since this tRNA has dropped off its amino acid, it is now chained. And if you look at AUG on this chart, AUG, that cuts from methionine. So here I'm going to go ahead and write down methionine. Okay. And this tRNA without the amino acid now is going to leave to go back into the cell to pick up another, another amino acid and bring it in for translation. Okay. If you have more than one codon sticking out here, which, which is fine, please make sure that you have the corresponding amino acids chained up here. So if I had one more codon here, I should have one more amino acid here. Okay? That being said, for your test tomorrow, you're going to have 15, I'm sorry, 12 total codons. So you're going to have about 10 more down here. And you do not need to show all the tRNAs there. However, I will require you to write a final protein sequence. Okay. That being said, for the final protein sequence, you're going to go ahead and chain all of these together. Okay. So for as many codons as you have, so think about it, like you have 12 codons. And all of your codons code for amino acids except the stop codon. That being said, you should have a total of minus 1 equals 11 codons. Okay, so what you would do is you would actually code this together. So let me go ahead and do that for you. So here's my final protein sequence, my polypeptide. Met, pro, gly, 